okay, these hammers need a little bit of spacing. And, and it's not all just function. Of course, we do want the hammer to, to contact the string in the very center of the, the hammer. So, so come have a look over here. We want, it's a little bit trickier on these angled ones, but like that one, for example, that looks you know pretty good. It's pretty much hitting on the center of the hammer. It's a little bit more obvious up here. But we also want these hammers nice and uh, we want these hammers nice and uh, what aligned with each other. So not only aligned with the strings, but aligned with each other. We want we want somebody to be able to open up the piano and have a look inside and see that all of those hammers are just are just beautifully aligned. From a functional standpoint, I don't think it frankly matters all that much for them to be, you know, perfect and and equidistant from each other, but from a, maybe a pride standpoint or, or like a professional standpoint, you know, we just, we just want those hammers to look clean and, and professional. So, so I guess, I guess it's, it's, it's functional only to a point and, and in large part it's, it's frankly a cosmetic job in many ways. So let's talk about how to do that. So um, if, you, if you have a look at a lot of these, you know, they're, they're fairly close, but we've got an issue going on. If you look at the negative space here, this negative space is a little bit wider, or a little bit narrower. This one's a little bit wider. So I'm going to I'm gonna pick this hammer here to move ever so slightly over that direction. So if, if, yeah, the camera's perfect. That's a narrow one. That's a wide one. So, you know, but also this is a wide one and that's a narrow one. So maybe is that the solution? Could be. You could probably do, in this case, you could probably do either one. I like that one better. Okay, and down here, we've definitely got something going on there. A very wide negative space. We've got another wide, wide negative space. So here maybe, maybe we can move that one, that one over, and that one over maybe. Let's see. Maybe these two over and this one over. Okay, let's deal with this one. This this area is a little bit more serious. Let's try to clean that up a little bit. So to do that. Okay, and if you could just try to get that camera somewhere that it's that it's fairly obvious. This is a and it's and it's straight on. This is a trickier trickier problem because we've got the spin it action here. All right. When actually making the move, I'm going to put my middle finger down here where the where the shank meets the hammer butt and then my pointer finger I'm going to put on the catcher and that way I've got I've just got like ultimate control of that of that hammer. Okay, I'm not going to hold it here. Okay, you, you don't have anywhere near the influence on that hammer up here. So let's start. Let's start on this one. Let's move this one over to the left. So even though the problem, the biggest problem is here, but we've also got a problem there. So let's start. Let's start with this one. So there again, I'm going to put shine the light in there. I'm going to put my yeah, that looks good. So I've got my finger, middle finger there, pointer finger there. And then I'm going to loosen the screw just enough. And I'm going a little bit to the left. So I'm going to loosen that screw just enough. That was probably, I don't know, a quarter turn or so. And I'm actually going to push that hammer over a lot further than it needs to go. And then I'm going to tighten that screw really tight. I mean, that's that's really snug there. Okay, that, that pretty much cleaned up that area. Now let's move, let's try this one. Okay, that, that seems to be the, the current issue and then maybe next we'll move that one. Move my light just so that I can see where the, see where that notch is. 
three. Okay, this one I'm going to the right. So we go down a little bit, push it over, like I said, further than it needs to go. And I'm I'm constantly putting pressure on my screwdriver so that I don't lose the slot. And I tighten that one down pretty hard. Okay, that didn't go, didn't stay far enough. So I'm gonna go back in there, find that screw again. Okay, once I found the screw, I shouldn't need the flashlight anymore because I'm just gonna keep keep push keep pressure on it, um, you know, in this direction so that it doesn't fall off. I'm gonna get the catcher above the screwdriver, push it over like I said, with my two fingers there. I hope that's visible. And then tighten that screw down hard. Okay, that cleaned that up nicely. And the last one I'll do is right here. So, here again, flashlight's very helpful. Got the screwdriver on the, on the screw, and I'm putting a lot of pressure on that so I don't lose that. I'm gonna go in there, loosen it. See, now it's nice and floppy. I'm gonna push it over a lot further. And while keeping pressure, tighten that screw hard and good that cleaned things up pretty well so we could maybe do some minor cleanup right now in that section to uh, to get to get that a little bit better but as I look at it from this distance it looks pretty clean it looks pretty good as one of my mentors taught me if it looks good it sounds good and I mean, that's kind of a tongue-in-cheek expression, but it's kind of true. Like, like we want our restringing jobs to look good. We want the plate to look good. We want the keys, obviously, to look good. All of these things are, are really just visual kinds of um, aspects, I guess, of the piano. But, but in, in uh, the, the minds of our customer, and really, frankly, even in my mind, like, I take pride in, in a good-looking job. And so that's, this, is, this is definitely one of those. So a little bit more cleanup on this piano and those hammers will look great. Therefore, they'll sound great.